Devin Graves here coming to you once again from Studio D and today I want to teach you how to build an off-the-grid future-proof Pro Tools HD Beast. I'm basically retracing the steps of how to build exactly the system I have. If you look at the video I made called Why I'm Glad I Can't Upgrade Pro Tools, you'll hear a little more about why I'm working the way I am. But basically I'm just using an older system. I can't upgrade, I can't buy new plugins, but I have all I need. It's a muscle car of a DAW. Now, when I say future-proof, I'm the type of person that doesn't want to keep investing and reinvesting in computers, new computers, new operating systems, new versions of Pro Tools, new versions of the same plugins. I want to have one good, solid working system that has all the power I ever need, and then I would rather spend my money on outboard hardware, mic preamps, equalizers, compressors, guitars, and other instruments. Things that'll actually, things I can actually record instead of just changing the way I record. Because quite truthfully, from old systems that are, say, 10 years old or more, like the one I have, to the newer systems now, there's really not any sonic benefit. Not, not anything that I can tell. Once they got to this Pro Tools HD system, digital has really pretty much turned the corner and never looked back since. That's about when it came on par with analog in most people's opinions, most professionals' opinions, if not even surpassed. Now here's the thing. I had been running Pro Tools 7.4 from when I bought the system virtually brand new for about 10, 11, 12 years. I have invested in all the plugins back then that were available. Uh, my virtual instruments, and it got to a point to where I just couldn't upgrade any further. I couldn't even go to the next level of Pro Tools, which was Pro Tools 8, because my computer wouldn't support it. It was a PowerPC Mac, and it just wouldn't work with anything higher than Pro Tools 7.4. So that's what I lived with, and that's what I worked with, and I was completely happy with it. One day when I was mixing Eric Clayton's solo album, I got a blue screen. Finally, after a decade and a half, somewhere a decade and, or a decade and a half worth of faithful service, my computer died. This wouldn't have been the first time that I had reinstantiated my hard drives and reloaded all the um, software and just built it from the ground up. I had done that in the past a few times for various reasons. But this time was different because some of the plugins that I was using would no longer use the old offline authorization methods. I had this real taboo about having my DAW computer connected to the internet. And I, I just didn't want anything to be able to come or go that I wasn't putting there, you know. So I had this complete offline system. And some of these plugins, some of my favorite plugins, they're... they're Two ways they could authenticate. One is through an iLock, and I'm going to talk more about that because that's a big part of the future-proof uh, approach that I want to share with you. The second way is just like online authorization. And if your computer is not online, that's not an option. So some of these companies use this offline authorization where you actually use another computer that is hooked to the internet to get your authorization. That's done by, you instantiate the plugin, it says it's not authorized, would you like to authorize it now? You select offline authorization, and then it gives you a code that you then import to the other computer, upload that code to the authorization site, and then they send you back a response that you paste in the field for the response, and then you're authorized. And that had worked just fine, particularly on... Uh, Synthogy's Ivory, that was my favorite piano uh, virtual instrument, and another one was called Spectrosonics, Spectrosonics Atmosphere. And I love that one. I love that. It's a really cool synth. In both of those, I would have to uh, reauthorize in that offline way. After this blue screen I got, those were the two plugins that I couldn't reauthorize. 
the companies just change the way they do things and they don't support that type of authorization anymore. And the newer versions, which I could authorize, wouldn't run on my old system. So it was kind of this catch-22. I was just stuck. And two of my favorite instruments I lost completely. So, how to future-proof against things like that. Say, supposing your computer you've been using for 10 years dies. And now you can't authorize your DAW. You can, or you have to buy a new DAW. You buy a new computer, your old DAW isn't going to work on it because it's 10 years old. And uh, so if you buy a new computer, you got to buy a new Pro Tools. And that's a whole new can of worms because now Pro Tools has gone, as of the filming of this video, subscription only. And that's something I'm really not too happy about. You know, subscriptions are fine for people that are just starting out because there's not a lot of money to put out to get their Pro Tools. But if I was on a subscription basis for all the time I've been using Pro Tools or Logic, well, when it comes to Logic, that would be more than 20 years. Paying monthly subscriptions for 20 years would start to find myself on the losing end of that deal financially. I'd much rather just buy it once. Even when Logic, when I bought Logic 5, that cost $1,000 at the time, but I still have that. I still own that. I still have the authorization for it, the key for it. And if I have a computer that runs it, I can start that up today and run it today. I moved on to Pro Tools and that's the same thing. Now, Pro Tools works on the computer designed in the era that the version of Pro Tools was designed for. As operating systems moved on and as Macintosh models moved on and evolved, so did Pro Tools along with it. So, <laughs> leaving behind my older version of Pro Tools, uneligible for the new Macs and vice versa. So, future proof. I have a Pro Tools HD Axel rig that is a monster. I'm running Pro Tools 8. I could run as high as Pro Tools 10, but I accidentally stumbled across Pro Tools 8, just one upgrade from Pro Tools 7, which I'd been using, significant up upgrade, absolutely super stable, really, really, really excellent perfect. Don't want to change it. Don't need to change it. I don't care how fancy new versions of Pro Tools get. A guy like me that really thinks in analog terms, tape, mixing consoles, EQ, compression, reverb, delay, basic tool sets, that I have got that in major abundance in the Pro Tools rig that I have. And this Pro Tools rig is completely future-proof. And the reason that is, is that all of my licenses are on iLock. If you have a license on iLock of any plugin, of any DAW, as long as you have your iLock and as long as you have the installer, you can always just go buy a refurb version of the computer that is compatible. Uh, pennies, <laughs> for pennies on the dollar, I might add, and you'll, you'll see. And then you can just reinstall everything and that iLock will have all your authorizations already done. So that's what I call future proof. So how would you do it? How would I do it? I would really recommend Pro Tools 8. I also really love Pro Tools 10, at least in theory, what I've seen about it I really wanted Pro Tools 10. It was just too expensive when I made this change. I got the computer so that I could accommodate Pro Tools 10. That was actually my initial ambition. But I settled for Pro Tools 8 and 9, which I got on the same uh, iLock. And um, I just preferred version 8. I just preferred it. So that's what I use and that's what I'm sticking with. So the things that you would need. Now we're talking about a TDM Pro Tools system. This is, if you want to just buy a computer and run a DAW native, then of course you don't have to get any of these things I'm talking about. And if you buy a more modern computer, uh, well, you know, what is expensive today is going to be cheap in 10 years if you have to replace it. So that's why iLock is still going to be a good idea even for now. But if you really want to see a TDM system, it makes the computer power not an issue. 
And the computer that I'm going to recommend to you is going to be a muscle car of a computer, but all of the heavy processing is done within the TDM hardware platform of Pro Tools, okay? So here's what you're, what you're going to need is you're going to need the Pro Tools software, an official iLock license with the iLock. You're going to need a computer that's compatible, in this case with operating system OS X Lion, that's 10.7.5. You could also do this with a PC, but I just don't know about PCs. So all of this is relevant and you can exchange the Mac for a PC if that's what you prefer. You're going to want to, this particular Mac tower I'm talking about holds four internal hard drives and it has the capacity, well, it has eight uh, slots for RAM. I don't know if the maximum per slot is four gigabytes or if you can put an eight. I don't know, but mine is maxed out to, th well, mine has 32 gigabytes of RAM with four gigabytes on each slot. Uh, that was a significant upgrade from my previous tower, which had only eight gigabytes of RAM. I had moved from a dual 1.8 gigahertz power PC to a dual quad core 3.2 gigahertz. So I basically went up almost 16 times in my processing speed and went up four times in my ter as in terms of RAM by buying this machine that I bought. I would recommend using SSD hard drives. You could put four of them, four of them into this bad boy and costs on SSD hard drives have gone down so much over the, over the years. Even since I bought all mine, they're just almost dirt cheap now. If you had four hard drives, you would have one for your system drive. That's where you put Pro Tools. That's where you install all your plugins and so forth. Then one dedicated for recording audio. That's a very important thing, especially with Pro Tools, to have a dedicated drive just for your audio tracks. Not just Pro Tools. Any program will work better if you do that. A third one could be used for your sample libraries, and a fourth one can be either for additional sample libraries or backup. So four internal hard drives is massive, and uh, if there are four SSD, uh, SATA type hard drives, it's going to be a complete solid state, rock solid workhorse you're going to have. You might have to purchase the operating system, especially if you find a computer that has a H. HHD, uh, a standard spinning hard drive, and it has the right operating system on it, you still might need to buy the operating system. You can get them on a, on a USB stick for about 30 to 50 bucks, and it'll have a range of Mac OS operating systems from the older times. I don't know how legit that stuff is, but I've done it and it works just fine. Then once you got your hard drives and your RAM all maxed out, you're going to need the processing cards for Pro Tools, the TDM processing cards. You're going to need first one called a Core card, and then the rest of them will be called Axel cards. There are ones called Process cards that are also Pro Tools HD, but the Axel ones are about three times more powerful. So the core card doesn't matter. The core card is going to be the same either way, whether you have an Axel core card. The Axel core card will be a little more powerful than the uh, HD core card, but the uh, Axel processing cards are going to give you much more power than the process cards. You're going to need an audio interface and the staple Pro Tools HD uh, audio interface is called, the good one is called the DigiDesign 192 IO. Make sure you look at the analog version of that because there is a digital version that just has digital IO. Now you're also going to need the cables to hook that together. To hook the interface to the to the core card is how it works. Uh, there's a cable called a Digilink cable. It's a little bit expensive, anywhere from 50 to 79 dollars for that cable. Um, but we'll get a little more into that later. And we haven't talked about preamps yet because I want this to be clear. It's not like these new audio interfaces that have the preamps built in and then they just go in right into the computer. You plug a mic in and go. On the 192 IO, that is only line level analog 
inputs and digital inputs. So mic pre's are another consideration. Now we're going to go to eBay and I'm going to show you as far as the Pro Tools iLock situation, you're going to probably get a little sticker shock uh, when you see the price as it pops up, but better news comes as I scroll below. Okay, so what we have here, this is just the, the first page, page of what I found, and this, this has a couple versions, three versions of Pro Tools. It has Ultimate 2023, Perpetual, HD 12, HD 11 and HD 10. Okay, so that's four different versions of Pro Tools. So actually, if you decided to move beyond the TDM system and go onto the new AAX, uh, the modern Pro Tools, which talk about sticker shock if you see what that stuff costs. Well, this TDM stuff used to cost those high prices too. We'll get into that a little later. But for this system, HD 10 is gonna be perfect. Yes, that's a pretty penny. That's that's a lot of money at a thousand bucks, but that is on an iLock. And if I am not mistaken, that comes with the installers. Pro Tools installers for Windows and Mac will be provided as well. Okay, now I'm not recommending this seller and I'm not not recommending the seller or any of these sellers. I, I don't, you know, you're on your own when you choose who you buy from. I'm just reporting here what I'm finding, okay? So right down below is another one, uh, Pro Tools 11 and Pro Tools 10 license on iLock. Now, that is so important. Don't buy a crack version. Even if, if there is no iLock, it is not an official license, no matter what they say. And it's having that iLock that's going to make it future-proof. That's going to be the thing that's going to allow you to load up a computer 10 years from now, provided you find the, the same computer. It'll probably be free by then, and, um, and it'll work. Look, it's getting a little better, $7.99. Pro Tools HD 10 on iLock. Also, remember that you need to see HD because you'll see Pro Tools 10, Pro Tools 9. If it just says that, that is a native-based system. It is not a TDM-based system. Um, so it needs to be HD. <laughs> you know, 1700 bucks almost. 12, 11, 10. Uh, iLock 3. Login info. That means that you can, I'm presuming that that means that you can log in to this iLock and continue to add um, licenses to that iLock. Some of these iLocks, they're not transferable. Uh, Pro Tools was that way. They don't like when you resell Pro Tools, so they won't let you transfer the license. And so on those iLocks, you, you won't have, you may or may not have access to the iLock account that will allow you to add new devices to that iLock. So if that is the case, you'll actually have to buy a second iLock for all the licenses for any plugins that you buy. Um, maybe just get a little USB hub to have those two iLocks on and um, you'll be good to go. Now this one, this is something similar to what I bought. Uh, I think I paid about 250 and I have an iLock that looks just like this, and it has Pro Tools HD 8 and HD 9. This one at 275 has 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. It says up to 10. I imagine that's up through Pro Tools 10. Uh, I don't know if that comes with any installers or anything like that. Yeah, they're just the uh, the license. So... You would have to, maybe you can go to DigiDesign and just download the um, uh, Pro Tools version. I think that you can just do that for free. Uh, go to the archive, the uh, legacy versions of Pro Tools and download either 8 through 10, whichever you like. And then you should have the license available on this uh, iLock. Another thing you can do is you can probably buy the installation discs right here on uh, eBay. And um, that's actually not too bad of an idea because you'll just kind of always have them. But this this is something that might be not too crazy. This Ballad of the Soul, I believe I bought them from this seller before. 
if I remember correctly. I've had no bad um, experiences on eBay. These are a couple of the uh, plugins that are available. You can buy a iLock license for this slightly rude compressor or this Telray delay, um, old classic delay. Uh, now, here's a version of it's a student edition with iLock account. $87, but it is not Pro Tools HD. So, heads up, that's not going to work. Here's one, HD 10 and 9 on iLock 2, 550 bucks. iLock 2 with Pro Tools 18, not, not going to work. Okay, here's something to look out for. These are the installation disks for Pro, Tool, Pro Tools 10 HD. Um, 69 bucks, but there's no license included. So this would be a good companion if you buy an iLock that has the license, but you don't have the installer, and if somehow you can't get the installer from Avid or whatever, then you'll, you, you buy these, install them, and put them away, and uh, you'll always have them future-proof. Okay? This is, uh, here's some honorable mention. There's a couple of plugins uh, for this old system. This is an iLock license for 200 bucks for a Reverb One. This Avid Reverb One is a fantastic reverb plugin. When I got my system, I got this included, but if you were to buy Reverb One at the time, that was $1,000 just for that one plugin. Excellent reverb. I use it for snare almost exclusively. It's a beautiful, beautiful reverb. Another honorable mention is anything from Mic DSP. Uh, filter bank, particularly filter bank, that gives you a whole suite of different types of EQs. Compressor bank gives you a whole slew of all these really good compressors. They're all emulations of classics, as are the EQs. Uh, there is analog channel one and two. Analog channel one and two, respectively. One is a tape emulator, and the other one is an analog console emulator. I have all of those and they're just fantastic. So you might have to find those as iLock assets, TDM iLock assets. If you can find anything from Mic DSP, I would jump on it. Uh, that's the thing that's important to, uh, to say here. When you're getting the plugins for this version of Pro Tools, it has to be TDM and that means that it works on the TDM cards or it can be RTAS and that means that it runs on the computer's resources. A lot of virtual instruments work that way. Uh, the TDM plugins will also work as RTAS plugins just at the push of a button on the face of the plugin itself. Like say if you're maxing out your cards and you still need more plugins, you can then start opening RTAS versions. Then your computer will start doing the workload. And if you have a computer like this one, I'm pretty sure you can get pretty far with that. Enough said about the versions of Pro Tools. You know, this is what I'm finding today. I was finding a lot more back when I was searching, but today I'm seeing more, a lot more available than I was seeing yesterday. So sometimes you might just have to keep your eyes open uh, uh, and be patient to find uh, the Pro Tools you want, and especially now the, the plugins to go with it. Um, of course, it's going to come with uh, a basic set of the stock plugins, and the Pro Tools stock plugins are phenomenal. But um, if you want to add anything more, it's going to be probably the downside of a, a of a rig like this because you can't use any new plugins. And some of the really new ones are some of the really cool ones. But I put that out of my mind because I just use a basic tool set and just try to use that to the best of my ability and all the new stuff. I'm not sure if it's any better sounding or if it just has a better graphic, but I've never had any complaints with the way the Pro Tools plugins sound. Never. But definitely start here. Make sure you can get Pro Tools before you build this big rig up for it because it would be pretty bad if you <laughs> spent all the money on the infrastructure and then you couldn't put the software on it to run it. So check the software first. And now let's look at the Mac. Um, what I'm using is a Mac Pro Tower. It has, the only criteria it has is that it has to be able to use OS X 10.7.5 Lion. And look at this, 64 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte 
HDD. That's a spinning hard drive. It's not a solid state. So I would actually change that out. But $250 and one cent. This is an absolute monster of a computer. $169.98. This has OS X 1010. So you have to be sure that it will at least be capable of running OS X 10.7.5. And if it can run anything above that, it probably cannot run 10.75. So when I do my searches, I actually search with Mac Pro OS X Lion 10.75. And see, I'm finding hard drives with 10.75 loaded onto it, but the computer itself has to be able to support that as well. So it might be a safe bet to get Say, for example, I notice these all have um, spinning hard drives. So if, you, if that were the case and you bought a computer like, say, this one, um, you would probably want to upgrade those to solid-state hard drives. And you can see solid-state hard drives for these good Samsung Evos. For a 250 gigabyte hard drive, it's like 25 bucks. So for 100 bucks, you could put four uh, solid state hard drives in there and then you just have to somehow get the um, OS X Lion operating system that you can reinstall on those um, hard drives but finding a computer that is that comes with it it's probably maxed up to that and that's probably the one you're looking at this is probably if not the same computer as mine um, extremely similar looks looks the same on the on the front so yeah, you can then find yourself some hard drives. For the main system drive, I couldn't imagine needing more than 250 gigabytes because that's only to hold your, uh, your software. It's only to hold the DAW and uh, the, the plugins and things like that. And I don't think you're gonna get anywhere near uh, this um, amount of space uh, with that. So when you have the audio drives or the sample library drives, it might be worth investing more and getting bigger drives, like 500 gigabytes or one terabyte. I'm getting away with, well, one of each of those. So, and I have quite extensive sample libraries. Once you get yourself, say, four of these things, whatever size you think you need, you're going to need to fit them in the computer. And that's this adapter here. This is, they cost about 20 euros, $20, uh, for one of them, oh, this one is 30 for two. Um, you'll need one for each hard drive you have. And the little SSD snaps right into here. And then this thing screws onto these little bays that just have like this lever, and then you can just pull it out. It's not like the older Macs that I used to use where you would have to attach the cable and then you know screw it in and stuff. You just attach the hard drive to these bays, and then you slide it in and lock it. Super slick. So you need four of these if you had four SSDs. These are SSD to SATA uh, hard drive adapter. We want to talk about RAM. I saw that one with 64, so I have 32 gigs of RAM in my computer. That was a massive upgrade from what I had been using. Um, I would be sure to find that it's for like a Mac Pro 2006 to 2008. Uh, I'm not sure the year of my Mac. I can't even find that information even on the about my Mac, about this Mac uh, part of the, you know, that I actually have up on that screen. Um, but what it does say is that is this DDR2, um, 667 megahertz, and this is RAM from Mac, Apple, 8 times four gigabytes. That's exactly what I have. I have eight slots, each with four gigabytes. I don't know if you can put eight times eight gigabytes. Maybe you can. But as it is, to completely max this thing out to 32 gigs, if, if that is maxed out, we're talking about 43 euros. That's pennies compared to what it used to cost. Okay, so now you have the computer. Then you're gonna need two more components. You're gonna need the TDM cards. And these cards used to cost about five, three to five thousand dollars for one card. Now, because they're outdated, you can see them for a whopping three hundred dollars for three, 
165 for 2, 99 for 1. Now, there are a couple differences here. Now, um, the Apple that I am talking about, the, the Apple Pro, the Mac Pro, that has this port called, the slots are called PCIe, PCI Express. And they have this very small connector here. And that's what my computer has. However, I built my system on an older computer that had PCI-X slots, so I had to use PCI-X cards. They're exactly the same power. This is a PCI-X, you can tell, because this, this is, that connection uh, to the computer is much wider. And you can see there, there's the HD core card. And that square port, that rectangular port, is the port that the uh, audio interface is going to hook up to. Then you have here the HD Axel card. That is the higher capacity, which I told you about, processing card. And you can just add Axel card after Axel card after Axel card until your machine is maxed out. The Mac that we're talking about will have three spare slots, so you can have one core card and two Axel cards. Or what you can do is you can get a Magma expansion chassis, and this is exactly what I did with mine. This is a PCI-X to PCI-E adapter and ex expander. So this has six slots for PCI-X cards, which I have mine maxed out, and then it has the PCI-E card which goes into the computer. Now this particular listing is very cool because this is 455 euros not only for the expander but it has three cards with it. It has a core card, I, I looked into this already, it has a core card and two uh, Axel cards but it doesn't have the host card which plugs into the computer itself. So look out for those sort of things. You'll have to see um, if you looked in the um, looked up here for that host card for a Magma PE6R4. Okay, this one has the host card. It's 750. It comes with one Axel, one core card. This one is an HD6. Axel one core, five Axel one core card, host card. So like for 1400 bucks, it's full of cards and it's ready to plug right into the computer. It has everything. Now that may seem like a lot of money, but this would have costed what, 35,000, $40,000 just a few years ago. Okay, so keep that in mind. Anyways, if you're going to put them just in the computer, make sure you're getting PCIe cards. And also make sure that they come with something called a flex cable. Because not only do these go into the computer, you stack one, two, three of them into the uh, computer slots, but this flex cable will connect one card to the next. The flex cables cost somewhere around 30 euros a piece. Oftentimes, though, it will come included with the card you buy. Digidesign HD XL PCIe card with flex cable. Whichever way you go, whether you're just putting them in the computer or if you are a use, a filling up an expansion chassis, make sure you're just getting the right formats, whether it's PCIe or PCIe-X, and make sure you have a flex cable. For this, you would need two flex cables, one from the core to the process and one from the process to the other process okay either make sure that the cards come with them or find them separately there's one this is a flex cable they're selling it for 35 bucks it clips on right here and the other side clips on to the next neighboring card and then and so on and so on so now that we've we've seen the uh, TDM cards the, the expansion chassis. Now we're looking at audio interfaces. This is the DigiDesign 192 IO. This is the one I use. They were about $5,000 new, as are the new current HDX um, IOs that Avid is making. And here's what you're getting for that. 
you have eight channels of analog in, eight channels of analog out, eight channels of digital in and eight channels of digital out, both on AES EBU, these 25 pins, and also on optical ADAT. You'll see right next to them, you have the ins and outs. So actually in this case, there's 16 channels of uh, digital IO. The analog inputs that you see, you see uh, balanced and unbalanced, and then the analog outputs you see, those come stock, as do the next uh, the top row of digital I.O. That bottom row of digital I.O. you see there, that is optional and you can even put in cards that are additional analog. You can add eight analog ins or eight analog outs, but not both. Now you see these ports here, the one that says primary port, that is connected to the core card. That's done with a cable called a Digilink. They're not cheap. They're about anywhere from 50 to 80 bucks. But just make sure that they say Pro Tools HD because I think the newer Pro Tools HD X has a different cable. So Pro Tools HD, um, this one that says PCIe, PCI X is probably right. But also make sure it's not a, a legacy one like this. This one's for the 888. This is for the, the mix system that's older than the HD uh, Axel systems that we're talking about. So this particular one here, at least we know at that price, at least we know that that is Pro Tools HD core or process cards. Pro Tools HD interfaces. That's That one we know is going to work. So... You'll see that one that says expansion port. You'll see one that says expansion port and one that says primary port. The primary port goes to the core card. The expansion port goes to the next 192 IO that you have. You could buy two, three, four, five of these things um, and just connect them, daisy chain them together. I think there are certain limits depending on how many cards you have. But in my system, as I have, I have probably accumulated about 32 ins and 32 outs, maybe 42 uh, outs, 48 outs, I should say. There's another one that you might find, DigiDesign 96IO. Uh, that's just a faceplate, don't be fooled. Okay, here's one. It's a hundred bucks. I gotta tell you, I have one of these and I used one of them. This one's overpriced. I I used one of them for many years and I didn't think it sounded any better than uh, the old Motu audio interface I was using with Logic. And since this thing at the time was like $2,000, I was expecting a significant upgrade. And um, it sounded pretty much the same. I could record at 96K with it and it did sound better like that. And I did that for a while, but that does use double the resources and it takes up twice the space on hard drive. So I find that this 192 sounds better than the 96 IO at 48K than the 96 IO sounds at 96K. That's my opinion, but it's also something that I've heard from others. The one thing I can say that's good about this is it has normal analog inputs, you know, balanced quarter inch analog inputs, and that's really cool. In contrast to the 192, it has the DB25 connectors. You can't plug any line level device directly into without use of a proprietary cable. In fact, that's where I'm going to show you now. I got mine from Tomon, and you have one for the input and one for the output. Now, basically, the inputs you need to go from your mic preamps, for example, you have a bunch of uh, analog mic preamps, and then uh, they'll each plug into one of these respective eight cables, and then that goes down onto this DB25, which plugs into the audio input, the analog input. And then this is the special thing about the using this analog uh, setup uh, in contrast to what I'm going to talk about later when I talk about mic preamps, is that you have this output that'll go into the input of the preamps. Now, 
There's not a lot of use of going into a preamp again, but if you have channel strips or if you have EQ or compressors, you can go out of Pro Tools into the compressor, into the channel strip, say for example, and then out from that same channel strip back into Pro Tools. So this is true real-time hybrid mixing. You open up, if say for example I'm using my Focusrite ISA30 that's behind me here, and it's got EQ and compression on there, and I have that going into the input of Pro Tools, so I just record it going into the input, but if I decide later I want to use that on say a kick drum or something, I want to use the ISA430 on a kick drum, I just open it as a insert, and as long as I have the inputs and the outputs looped through, I can um, use that, the EQ or the, any of the facilities in real time right within Pro Tools. I'm not sure if the pinouts uh, are the same on all of these sort of cables that you'll find. I know for sure that these work. And this one is the XLR male DB25 Digisnake. It's called Digisnake. It's 158 bucks. And that goes from the output of the interface to the inputs of your analog gear. Conversely, this is the DB25, DB25 XLR F female Digisnake 4. It's the Digisnake 4. I think it's four feet long. And that goes from the outputs of your preamps to the input of the audio interface. That's 128 euros. Since we're talking about this audio inter interface is just a line level audio interface, it's not the same as your, uh, I don't know, Focusrite Scarlets that have the mic pre's right on. You just plug the mic right into it and you plug the interface right into the computer and you're good to go. That's not the case here. But if you find buying eight mic preamps quite daunting, especially if you, they're really expensive ones, you can still do it another way. Um, I'm going to go to Sweetwater here. And these are all different versions of 8-channel microphone preamps that have ADAT outputs. And those ADAT outputs will go right into the ADAT inputs here. So mic preamp, ADAT light pipe into the audio interface. That gives you 8 mic preamps. Plus, you know, all these have very good modern cutting edge AD conversion. So you're not going to lose anything by going that route. And you still have those analogs open for when you do get a nice expensive channel strip or two or half dozen in the future. You can plug them in, you know, one by one as long as you have those, those cables. Uh, one thing that I would look for. This particular one and this particular one stand out because they have something called inserts and otherwise if you're going from the mic preamp directly to the ADAT input there's no way to put any compressor or equalizer in between that chain there's no way to do it you just have to do it in software later the only workaround is to go from the analog outputs of the device to the analog inputs of the compressor or equalizer and then the analog outputs of that device into the analog input of the interface. The Audion ASP880 in, as opposed to the ASP800. Now this is a really nice device. This one just doesn't have inserts. That's the only reason why I would spend the extra money and get this. These audience have excellent mic preamps, excellent A to D conversion. This actually has D to A conversion as well. Uh, that's what the insert really is. And it works on these same DB25 cables. So actually, the line output of this device could go directly into the line input without those breakout uh, XLR cables that I showed you. It could go direct, and that probably costs less, I'm sure. What it also could do is it can go out from this device with the use of the XLR male uh, version of the cables into your processors, your compressors, your equalizers, and the outputs of those equalizers, it, compressors, etc., will go into the female version of the XLR to DB25 cable, the blue one I showed you, and that will go into the bottom input as a return 
and then you can still go into the ADAT inputs on the audio interface and you still have those analog I.O. in reserve. So remember that the key to having a future-proof off-the-grid system is the iLock. Literally the key is the iLock. And a lot of people complain about the iLock system, they don't like it, but I have found that it really averts disaster. It's still in use today. It's iLock 3 is what's going on now, if I'm not mistaken, maybe even iLock 4. You're going to find these things on iLock 2. They're just a USB dongle, and um, this is where all of your authorizations are going to reside. So if in five years down the road, this computer system you buy crashes on you, craps out on you, get on eBay and you'll find one for 50 bucks by then. And just as long as you have your installers, keep all your installers together in one folder on a USB drive. Keep that USB drive somewhere really safe. If you have installers that are DVDs, that's also cool. But having them on the USB stick is faster and better and more reliable as long as you don't lose that thing. So as long as you have your iLock with the licenses and as long as you have your installers, you can reinstall this thing over and over again. Okay, so I hope this saves you some money. Again, the, again, the downside of a system like this is that you're out of the loop for any modern plugins and there's a lot of really cool stuff out there. But um, in my opinion, the best of those are emulating analog hardware. And every year they claim to get better and better and better. At what point are they gonna be actually better than the analog gear that they're emulating? I don't know, but if you own any of that analog gear, you just go in and record it that way and you're done with it. And just always be on a scavenger hunt for any TDM slash RTAS plugins that have an iLock license. Collect them, build them, this system is going to just last and last and last. So there's a lot of things I didn't cover, like the uh, controllers and things like that. But this isn't about how to make an entire working DAW system with all the peripherals and things. This is just about having a Pro Tools rig that is going to be a monster. It's going to be free of all the subscription-based plans. And it's going to just be there for you day in and day out, no matter what happens to the internet or the browsers or the companies themselves this thing you're going to be able to fire up again and again and again so i hope that helps and until next time